Hello, and welcome to episode 8 of the Beginner Guide to One Piece. Frankie was first teen back in One Piece chapter 329, corresponding with anime episode 233. Frankie made his first true debut in One Piece chapter 335 corresponding with anime episodes 337. In terms of concept art, it appeared that Frankie was meant to look a little bit more zombie-like, I guess? And that's badass, because he definitely looked, he looked more like Frankenstein. Like, when I look at the concept art for Frankie, I think of like a Frankenstein-type character, not a super cool robot character, mech character like he is now. Oda has said before that if Frankie was a real person, he would be an American. As stated by Oda, Frankie gets 8 hours of sleep every day, meaning he is the only male straw hat to get a total 8 hours of sleep. Frankie was born in the South Blue, and now it is time to get into Frankie's backstory and the history of Frankie's character. Frankie's real name was Cuddy Slam. Cuddy Slam was born in the South Blue when he was young. His parents, who were pirates just as he is now, threw him off their ship into the ocean. He was then rescued by the legendary shipwright Tom, who made Cuddy Slam his apprentice. After seeing Cuddy Slam made a cannon out of crap that was lying about, Tom's other apprentice Iceberg then gave Cuddy Slam the nickname Frankie, because Cuddy Slam is a weird name. Frankie learned shipwriting, shipbuilding from Tom, but he spent most of his time constructing warships to hunt and defeat Sea King. Each one of them named Battle Frankie with a number corresponding to the order of its construction on the side or back. He once <coughs> proclaimed that he would make his own dream ship with him as a shipwright, to which Tom said he could do it. If, if he could do it, he would definitely surpass him. When Frankie was 12 years old, Tom was put on trial for having built the ship that the Pirate King, Gold, Gold Roger, or Gold D. Roger, sailed the Grand Line on. Tom made a deal that if in 10 years he could build the sea train, the Puffing Tom, a train that could sail the ocean, he would be pardoned. After 14 years had passed, 10 to build the train and the first line, 4 more to build the other 3 lines, the train yielded, the Marines were going to let Tom off as thanks for creating the train. However, he was framed by CP5, or Cyberpole 5's current leader, Bandom, who was after the blueprint for the ancient weapon Pluton, which had been handed down to Tom through the shipwright of Water 7. Bandom used the, the, the warship that Frankie had built to fight the Sea King to attack Water 7. Although Tom and his apprentice stopped the attack, it appears that everyone has seen the one attacking. As a result, Tom was sentenced to death. As Fandom was taking Tom away, Frankie hit him in the face with a rifle. Frankie st soon stood in front of the puff puffing Tom, trying to rescue Tom. When he was run down by the train, his body was ba badly injured, and he was presumed dead. Now, this is very interesting, because I've always had a problem with it. Because Frankie manages to, to get hit by a train, survive, and rebuild his body. I've never agreed with this, but whatever, let's continue. He managed to fix himself with spare parts from an abandoned ship and had BF-6, BF-36, I apologize, Tattooed on his shoulder, on his shoulder, making himself the 36th Battle Frankie. Four years after his disappearance, 
he went to the iceberg and was outraged to find out that he had allied himself with the world government. The two argued, but Iceberg gave Frankie the Pluton blueprint and was also driven to tears over seeing Frankie was still alive. Iceberg then told Frankie to leave Water 7 so the blueprint would never be found. He refused, saying that it was his decision. He, Frankie, of course, refused it. He tells Iceberg that it's his decision whether or not he wants to stay or hold it or he needs to leave. And that's his choice. Which then made Iceberg very pissed off and caused an argument between the two. Frankie went into the back street where Zamba and his gang attacked him when he entered their turf. They were quickly defeated and the Turk was taken over by Frankie. He then found Mozu and Kui drinking in the middle of the day and he proceeded to drag them for some cola and recruit them as his followers. He took them all to the newly made Frankie house where he formed the Frankie family. <coughs> Sorry about that. With them he became Water 7's underground mafia leader. He stole from incoming pirates Dismantled Jess and became known as a crook on Water 7. While he didn't, while he did indeed do some immoral actions, stealing good from pirates as well, as he would one day do to the Mugiwa no Ichimi, or the Straw Hat Pirate, he mostly did all of those out of a sense of atonement. He constantly blamed himself for Tom's death and decided to spend the rest of his days on Water 7 attacking innocent thieves and losers, organizing all the thugs so we could keep the city crime in check and, and overall protecting the city that Tom loved. He at that point was never able to forgive himself for what happened to Tom. During year, his year with the Franklin Stanley, he also gathered money to purchase his the precious Adam Wood to accomplish his dream. Now, there is not any information on what happens after this, before we enter Water 7. And I'm not going to go over all the events that happened during the arc, because you can just watch the series to get all that information. So, let's just talk about a couple things. One, Luffy and Frankie do fight multiple times, but when Frankie is captured along with Robin by CP9, he, and witnesses the Straw Hat fighting to save Robin. He eventually pretty much gets on his knees after that arc is over and begs the Luffy to permit him to build their ship. Build them a new ship. Obviously, the, of course, McGowan Mary had been damaged. Luffy has reluctantly agreed, especially because of Nami's influence when he found out it was free. And let's be honest, we all know Nami. She was all over that. But, so he built, well, not really, because it was their money that he had stolen, but whatever. The point is, is that he built them a ship, and what happens is, Luffy, when Luffy, because they need a ship, right, Luffy convinces him to come along and join the crew, and go on adventure with them. And, yeah. So that is all for a Frankie backstory. I know, it's, a relatively short and simple backstory, but not all the Straw Hats had the most complex backstories. Frankie is a cyborg powered by Cola. Next to being the shipwright of the Straw Hat Pirates, and a damn good one at that, considering he built the Thousand Sunny, which has abilities such as the Cootie Burst, which I must say is a very impressive feature on the ship. Frankie is best known for his physical ability because it's a fighting manga. Fighting ability is what matters and you need your physical ability in a fight. But let's get into that. So in terms of raw physical power, Frankie can easily be counted as one of the strongest members of the Straw Hat. This is possibly due to his year as a ship dismantler and a bounty hunter prior to being a pirate. Even when running low on cola, he had the strength to easily overwhelm a fully grown elephant, stopping it in its track before dragging it around like by the trunk like it was a rag doll. 
when first encountered by CP9, or, or confronted by them, I should say, in Water 7, Frankie was strong enough to almost break through Blue Nose Tech Eye, or Iron Body, which is quite ridiculous considering it took Luffy using Gear Secondo, or Gear Second, to do so. Frankie was even able to briefly fight on par against Luffy during their initial confrontation before their <coughs> <coughs> before their fight was interrupted by the Galley Law Company worker. Now, at this point in time in the series, it, it, it is unknown whether or not Luffy had yet to fully develop the Gear Second. He he said that he Doug would say, "I'm glad I met you, guy." When he Explaining Gear Second to Bluno, meaning that he probably didn't finish developing it until very recently, and referring to the fact that CP9 helped him to come up with the idea for Gear Second. So, this fight could really have gone out either way. If this fight had continued, it is very possible that Luffy would have just unveiled he already had Gear Second, used it, and destroyed Frankie in like one attack. Or it is very possible that they could have continued fighting and Frankie or any and it could have been a fight that would have gone either way. It really would have depended on luck. Because they were around even at the time. But let's continue on talking about his strength. In addition to his strength, Frankie also displayed considerable skill on whatever item he lays his hand upon, be it in combat or out of combat. He was Seen effortlessly using a large pair of makeshift nunchucks at one point. Even without his cyborg function, Frankie's fighting abilities are more than enough to allow him to fight against even trained assassins. The fact that he could defeat Fukuru, Fukuru, a member of CP9 on his own, is a testament to his power. To his power, his fighting style appeared to be appears to revolve around boxing, but he does not hesitate to fight dirty if needed. He's a pirate, of course he's going to fight dirty. He also seems to have great hearing, as he could hear the drawers trying to open the smiley factory from a fairly long distance while being backslammed by Senior Pink in the Dressrosa arc. Now, there, there, there really isn't much to talk about with Frankie, besides for his cybernetic body, or a cyborg body. Now, Frankie is a human with artificial parts, commonly known as a cyborg. His front is heavily armored and insensitive to most attacks, while his back, where he could not reach, remains vulnerable. His body is equipped with a wide variety of weapons, including rockets, an extendable arm, and the ability to breathe powerful frames as well as the ability to release multiple blasts from multiple parts of his body. His stomach contains a refrigerator that can hold up to three bottles of cola that fuels him. As I stated earlier, Frankie is fueled by cola. His personality is also affected by the type of beverage that it used, as I said earlier. He can also use an attack called coup de vent, which involves farting. So yeah. Well, let's move on. In terms of the time skip, Frankie is very controversial. Some like his time skip design, and some do don't like it. I personally like him more pre time skip. I'm not the biggest fan of the post time skip Frankie, but he's still awesome. And the upgrades he did get made to him during the time skip are pretty badass. They just may not look the greatest. After two years, Frankie had drastically modified his body and become much larger and optimal in appearance and function, respectively. It can be inferred that he is on the absolute cutting edge technology-wise, since nearly all the futuristic and technological aspects of the Marines and the world as a whole, example the path of Fitna, stem from Dr. Vagapunk's genius and using his laboratory, notes, and research that Frankie upgraded himself. 
It is also worth noting that Frankie's original transformation into BF-37 was initiated as a quasi-surgical operation of necessity to save his own life and it is assumed was accomplished with some modicum of haste from a medical standpoint since he suffered from massive and external and internal injury where the process to become BS-37 was a two-year-long planned process with highly advanced machinery in a fully thought, abandoned, albeit abandoned, scientific laboratory on his pioneering cyborg body. So Frankie's own experience being one beforehand was likely factored in when customizing its is schematics and functions as well as understanding whatever information Dr. Vagapunk left behind. And with that, we're going to bring this video to an end. Remember guys, next week is episode 9, the history of our favorite archaeologist, Nico Robin. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please like, comment, and subscribe for more videos. This is One Piece Nation, signing out. Have a gr- And I don't want you to have a good day. I want you to have a- Super Day.